Welcome to In Touch with Officer Dawn and Ray the DA. I am your host, Allison Beck. And today on In Touch, Officer Dawn and Ray the DA discuss the dumbest criminal caught by his own stupidity in Oklahoma. Thank you for listening and please join us next time. In Touch, I'm Officer Dawn with Fayette Commonwealth Attorney Ray Larson and I've had my instructions. Ray says, why don't you just follow me this time? So wow. he's got something special for you because I'm, I'm, I'm right in behind you. What you got? <laughs> you, you're walking behind me. <laughs> I got the greatest story. If we're talking about technology and the criminal justice system, and this, <clears throat> this is a story I read yesterday. Um, an Oklahoma man was charged with burglary after police allegedly matched his DNA to used toilet paper oh. at the scene of the crime. We just don't pay our cops enough. That's crazy. <laughs> Police said that this defendant oh. used the home's bathroom while burglarizing it, and he left his mess behind, and he was identified from his droppings. Wow. That prompted neighbors to, to once again to say, don't ever forget to flush. Wow. Now, what I say is, if you don't, you're going to end up in sort of a crappy situation oh, like this guy. Uh, funny. What do you think? Well, I think that must be a state where burglary is still a big deal for them to go that much trouble to spend the money on DNA and stuff. I don't know that they would do that in Kentucky now with the way that they've uh, decriminalized burglary uh, to the point Well, they haven't decriminalized it, but people don't go to prison because no. they don't call it a violent crime. Violent crime. The, um, we had a young woman that interned for us last summer named Rewa Zakaria, and uh, she's from Lebanon, and her family's from Lebanon, and she goes to law school in Charlotte, North Carolina. And so I, I get a call on Sunday from Rewa, and she says, my dad's restaurant has been burglarized and its name is Roly Poly, and it's out in hmm. yeah. Beaumont. So, um, I, what I did was went out, after I got out of church, I went out to see him. <laughs> and he said, yep, he said, that's exactly what happened. And apparently somebody broke into the back door of this store, but the next door to it is a Quiznos. <laughs> And a month before, people broke into that one. He said, I said, do you have any surveillance thing? He said, no, but Quiznos did. So we got busy looking at, for what's out there. And, uh, but the bottom line is, and this is what you're talking about, is even if they catch these guys, what are the chances of them going to prison? Not great. And, uh, so <clears throat> that's it's an issue that really bugs me and now i want to switch over to another case did you did you read about this or hear about the case of the kidnapping in madison county no well four guys turns out kidnapped some woman and they were stopped by the police on i-75 just recently mm -hmm. okay yeah now as it turns out, uh, the follow-up is one of the guys that, is, that was part of it gave him a false name, which is not unusual, right? And turns out he is wanted in Michigan for three counts of assault with intent to commit murder, uh, lots of firearms charges, and from Detroit, of course, okay. and the, some one of these other slugs is wanted in Louisiana for some violent crime. Now, what we got here, now see what's happened with this character from Detroit, is he's charged with these crimes, he may have been arrested, got out on bond, and then left. And that's the kind of thing that's going on now is they're, they're 
so busy trying to make sure nobody is in custody pending going to court first, or once they're convicted, uh, they are not sent to prison, or if they're in prison, they're pushed out the back door as fast as they can. Now, it's really interesting because this is, it just bugs my rear end about this stuff because what's happening is the people that write these laws are being told by all of the national people, oh, you're doing such a great job, you're such a forward-thinking state, while police and victims are sitting around thinking, what is going on for crying out loud? These people are not being punished when they commit crimes. And the, the message is crime pays. That's what we're dealing with now, and it's just, boy, is it offensive. The, um, so, the, the thing from the Richmond, the kidnapping in Richmond, just drove me crazy because this is somebody that should be in custody. Three serious assaults with intent to commit murder. That means that he either shot people and didn't kill them, but meant to, or beat them to the point that he was trying to kill them but didn't. So we're, that's well, just kind of... Detroit's a great example because their homicide clearance rate right now is about, what, 10%? 10%. That means if you murder someone in the, in the city of Detroit, uh, as of right now, you have a 90% chance that you're going to get by with that. Now, you compare that to Lexington, we're almost at about 100% on our homicide clearance rate. Right. Uh, everyone that commits a murder, I mean, I guess so far this year, mm -hmm. you know, 90 to 100% chance that you're going to be caught and convicted yeah. in, in Fayette County. Uh, so you contrast that with what's going on in Detroit, and we don't, we don't want any part of that. <laughs> you know, we want to keep things like they are and make them better. Uh, you know, in terms of crime fighting, we used to measure... Uh, uh, trends in crime in very small percentages, two or three percent, and you, police, prosecutors, you would track crime, and if tr crime was trending up even as much as one or two percent in a quarter, that, that's a, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And the question was, we don't accept crime trending up one or two percent, we want to know why it's not trending down five percent. That, that was, but, you know, just because of the way things have been structured and set up now at the legislative le level, uh, it's really not viewed quite like that anymore. It's just sort of, you're lucky to hold your own. You know, if we can just hold it where it is, everyone will, will be happy. And that's not enough because even Lexington having a, lo a relatively low crime rate, I mean, we do. We have live in a very safe city. Uh, you rest on your laurels and there you go. We don't want to reach a point where we go, well, we're, you know, we're, as long as we're better than Detroit, we want to keep things... Uh, in, in that 100% range on these on solid right, We don't want Detroit to be the thing we measure ourselves. Absolutely not.